Hi everybody, it's Michael back again with another video for you this week. I'm going to do something a little bit different than I've been doing for the last few videos. This one is going to be on a specific area in a house. Uh, so I've actually got five different room dilemmas that I'm going to be talking about today and they're just very specific. So it's not going to be an entire room like I've been doing for other videos. It's going to be like one wall or one kind of uh, design dilemma. In fact, we're calling this one here five awkward design dilemmas solved. So hopefully it's going to be a new series that I'm going to do for you and you're going to have to let me know if you like it down in the comments or just you know if you watch it you're watching and if you don't I'll probably know you're not liking it so much so that's how we're going to figure out if it's going to be a series or not I think it's going to be quite helpful so hopefully it's going to be something that you're interested in if you're faced with any of these design dilemmas that are sort of common in smaller tricky and awkward rooms then this one's going to be the one for you so let's get right into it okay Okay, so here I am in PowerPoint, and you know I love me my PowerPoint, so I'm just going to go with this one. Um, so for the first room that I'm going to do is a bedroom. So you have to kind of use your imagination a little bit. What you're going to see in this video is a series of line sketches. So each one of these line sketches is going to represent a room. And so basically the first room that I'm, that I'm going to be showing you is a bedroom. Now this bedroom has a unique problem that some bedrooms have, and that is it has a wall with a doorway over here. This could be a bathroom, it could be a closet, it could be anything over here. It's got probably a, a little bit of an entryway over here, maybe into the room. So this wall is sort of like a half wall and it kind of goes off into maybe a little hallway over this way. And then it has three windows. So the design dilemma that I have here is what if the only place to put the bed is in front of the large windows? So you kind of have to also use your imagination on the other side there might be another doorway on the other side to an ensuite or maybe to a different closet. There might be um, just like a half wall where it's not going to be possible to put a bed. So, for example, you really can't put a bed on this wall over here because, again, this is like a half wall entry wall. And on the other side, if you use your imagination, there's probably a doorway or something. So the only place to put the, to put the bed in this room is going to be in front of the windows. So the windows have their own little unique problem to start with too. So as you can see here, there's a little bit more space on this side of the window than there is on this side of the window. Sometimes that happens. So what I like to do is to try to just address the windows first to give myself a little bit of a, a parameter. So sort of like some, some framing for the window. So over here, we're gonna be talking about putting up some privacy on these windows here. What I like to use is a combination of a couple things. So a lot of times I'm gonna use some Roman shades. So I'm a big fan of Roman shades. We're gonna throw some Roman shades in there. And this is just going to give you a little bit of privacy in this area here. And that's gonna give us the opportunity to bring in a nice, um, let's see if we can try to bring in a nice little curtain rod over here. So we're gonna bring that in this way. We're gonna put that up near the ceiling. So a lot of times what I'm gonna talk about are along with design design dilemmas, if I could use my, my mouth to speak today, um, I'm gonna to be talking also about some kind of like common um, design techniques that I like to use too. So one of those is putting a curtain rod that's gonna be up close to the ceiling. Now this is probably gonna be a few inches down, maybe up to maybe four, four to six inches from the ceiling itself, depending on if you have trim. So this room doesn't have any trim. Uh, usually I like to go down a few inches, maybe four inches below the top trim of the room. If it doesn't have trim, like a lot of rooms do not. So I would just say at that point, go down maybe four to six inches from the top of the ceiling. And what that's going to do is this is going to give you a nice line that's going to go all the way across the room here. And what you're going to be able to do is bring in some, some shears. So I like to bring in some shears and I want them to kind of just break right at the floor. So that's got to go up just a little bit more so that the bottom of those curtains break right at the floor here. So it's not going to be um, like high waters. You're not going to have a, um, a curtain that's going to um, be too far over. So what I'll do is I'll just layer that one on top of that and I'm bringing it all the way over. So what this does, as you can see, is it kind of frames the space over here. So it's going to frame that area. It's going to give you a nice kind of even look to the, wind, to the wall behind uh, where the bed is going to go and that's just going to give you some nice framing and that also takes care of that gap that larger gap over here that smaller gap over here it's okay if the curtains are a little bit uneven you can move them over a little bit to make them look a little bit more even if you want to i'm totally fine with this being the way it is it's nice because you're going to have some privacy with the roman shades these can be decorative panels or shears on the side just to give you some soft edges on the side of the room all right let's bring that bed in 
and let's talk about some of the things that are going to happen with this bed here. All right, so we have this bed in the middle of the room here. So as you're walking in this way, this is the this is what you're going to encounter. You're going to have to kind of go around the bottom of the bed in order to get into this doorway over here, whether it's a bathroom or a closet, what have you. Uh, but that's okay. So the main dilemma here is that you have a bed in front of windows. So what do you do for a headboard? And that's kind of going to be the question for this particular segment of the video. So if you put a large uh, headboard in and you kind of go with something that is like a nice upholstered headboard. I love upholstered headboards. I have an upholstered headboard. Mine happens just to be in between two windows instead of in front of a window. So here's the here's the problem with this. Even though it has a nice shape to it, um, it probably has a nice matching fabric that goes into the whole bed, it's gonna obstruct those windows. So it's really gonna block out a lot of the natural light that you have coming into the room. That's not really the most ideal thing, right? So we're gonna get rid of that and we'll bring in something like a metal headboard. So here we have just like a wrought iron headboard. We're going to stick it in front of the window here. What that does is it allows you to have the light coming through the window and you don't have anything visually obstructing that that um, that window there that's going to bring in all that natural light. If you don't like the look of that, let's talk about bringing in something like maybe a wood headboard that has some horizontal slats. Uh, same thing that it's going to do. It's going to allow that light to come through the window and it'll allow you to open and close those shades as you need to and want to. Those could be blinds too. I just happen to like Roman shades. So that is what I would do for design dilemma number one. What if the only place to put the bed is in front of the windows? That's what you have to think about. If the windows aren't even, let's even them up with a couple of uh, drapery panels. Let's put some blinds or some Roman shades on the window so that you can control the light and the privacy in the room. And let's not block the window with anything solid. Let's going, let's pull something in that is going to be uh, a little bit more open so that you can see the light coming through from the space. All right, the next line, yeah, the next design dilemma, boy, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, is gonna be what if you have an uneven angled wall in a smaller dining room this one has two dilemmas. And then what if you have a chandelier that's off center? So you can kind of see that they have this nice little geometric chandelier hanging over here. There's sort of like an angle on this wall that brings up to a little bit of a kind of like a lofted peak over in this corner, but it kind of gives you a clipped corner on the wall and it doesn't give you a, uh, it's not a super big room. So you have to kind of be mindful of what you're gonna bring in because it's not a very large room. And then you have an opening that's kind of going into a different space into the house over here. So here we are, let's tackle this dilemma over here first. So you have a light fixture that is more so in the middle of this wall, but more pushed over also toward this entry doorway wall over here. So you don't have anything coming down in the center of the room. You got something kind of over in the corner over here. So in that way, I would say there's a couple of things to do. Remember a couple of videos ago, maybe it was last week, I talked about putting a round table in that trickier room that was like a multi-purpose room. So I'm gonna stick with that theory here and we're gonna bring a round table in. We're gonna put that round table underneath the light over here so that it is, and it's kind of like not right in the doorway of the room, but it's sort of in the center underneath that, that light fixture. You have to be mindful of a couple of things, the size of the table. You can't get a gigantic round table. You're gonna to have to get something a little bit more conservative because of the position of this door and because of how you have to then walk into this room and sort of you know, nav navigate behind this chair that's over here. And you can walk in and kind of go this way too. So you really have to be mindful of how big the table is. So if something in a smaller size room like this, I don't have the dimensions of this room, but let's kind of pretend that it is maybe a 12 by 12 square room, for example. You don't want to go bigger than a 48 inch table because if you go into like 54, 60, 72, something that's going to expand bigger, you're going to run into some problems with the ability to get around things and it's going to be very awkward in the room. So a couple of other things too. Let's talk about the table itself. There's a pedestal base that's going to allow you to push those chairs all the way in. And what is going to allow you to push those chairs all the way in is that the chairs don't have arms on them. So when you push those chairs all the way in, you could do more than three chairs. You don't have to just do three. I just wanted to make it look like, you know, a nice little graphic here so that you can see, you know, your way around things. 
but you could do maybe four chairs on this table that's about 48 inches maybe it's 42 inches but you get the idea you're in that four foot range or less in order to make this room work a little bit better for you so and then it's directly underneath that chandelier you've got enough room to walk into the doorway over here enough said about that pedestal table armless chairs push those chairs all the way in that's going to give you the ability to move things around move yourself around that table rather so this back wall over here now here we are, let's go to that first dilemma. What do you do with an uneven angled wall in a smaller dining room? Okay, so this room again, 12 by 12, you don't wanna put something super huge back here. And then you also have to be mindful of this space over here. So this, this little bit of a return on a wall that you get before you get to this doorway, you have to take into account what that measurement is too. So let's say that that is probably about maybe 20 to 24 inches. So maybe you have up to two feet of, of wall space here. So that means that you don't want to get a buffet or a server or a piece of furniture or shelves or anything like that that's going to pop out further than 24 inches. So you don't want anything that's going to be 28 inches deep. You don't want anything that's going to be, you know, super, super deep. In fact, you want it to be less deep than this wall. So a good way, so if we're talking that this wall is about 20 to 24 inches, then the depth of something that is 16 to 18 inches deep is going to be the most ideal piece of furniture to put on this wall. Also, you don't want something that's going to take up the entire space of the wall. So you want something that's going to be probably about 75% of, of the wall, up to 75% the width of the wall. So for example, you don't want to go you know, corner to corner, but you want maybe a little bit of space, a foot or two in between here for it to be a little bit more of a comfortable piece of furniture. So I found this nice little buffet that I kind of mocked up here for you. And that gives you a nice amount of space over here. You can put, maybe move it over just a little bit that way so that you have maybe equal space on both sides. That's going to give you a nice depth to the room. It's also not going to come out further than the um, the 24 inches of this wall. So say for example this is an 18 inch deep uh, cabinet credenza for or buffet credenza for this room. So a couple of things to keep in mind. In smaller rooms it's important to have the ability to see through and around furniture. So if you had some open shelves, some open storage instead of you know closed cabinets that would be great. This one here is good because you can see the wall behind it because it's it's positioned off the floor. So there's a little bit of space underneath it where you can kind of see underneath and it doesn't feel like such a solid piece of furniture. That's really important to kind of keep in mind when it comes to designing smaller spaces. If you can see around your furniture, if you can see under the furniture, if you have some open space, some negative space that they call it in design around different things, that's going to give you a lot to work with in a space. So that is the idea for this. Now, what do you do with this wall above? There's still a lot of wall above it here. There's still, you know, some space, you know, behind here. You can think about maybe putting a mirror. Say, for example, you have some windows on this wall over here. A mirror in this position is going to reflect some really nice light around the room. I like to put mirrors opposite of uh, or perpendicular to walls that have windows on them. And that just gives you a little bit of the ability to shine some light around in this space. And maybe we can bring in a couple of lamps and keep it really simple. You can position these lamps on the outsides of the buffet. You can position the lamps so that they're closer in toward the mirror. I kind of like them where they have a little bit of breathing room this way. I think this looks really nice because it gives you the chance to have, you know, some balance and some nice focal point in the room. We're keeping it really simple. This isn't meant to be like a big focal point in the room. So we've got some nice depth for this room. So we have that idea. Maybe we have the other idea to bring in something else. Maybe you want to have one large piece of art. Do that. Maybe you want to have just one lamp. Do that. Maybe you want to have some other decor kind of things over here. You could do that. That gives you a nice amount of light. It's also a light that's further away from this, this main light that's in the room. It's over here above the table, you have some light that's going to shine some, some illumination over here in this corner. That would be a good thing. Um, Perhaps you don't want to do a large piece of art. Maybe you want to do three smaller pieces of art, a triptych above there. You can bring in a lamp again, maybe on the side over here. I don't know if I would do two, but you could. You could probably, eh, you know what, let's leave the two out. Let's just leave it like this. Kind of go with the same premise of there's some light that's going to happen over here. Let's have some light and illumination over here in this corner. But you get the idea. You're kind of giving yourself a little bit of some dimension in the room. It's giving you a little bit of a storage piece that's going to be in the room. It's going to give you some space to store some dishes and to have a nice little backdrop to
to your table and chair situation over here. So that is design, desi design dilemma number two. Let's go on to design dilemma number three. Okay, so I did a blog post about this a few months ago, and it's how to hide those ugly things that are happening around in the room, like vents and things like that. Actually, it was a guest post that I had a, a guest come in and do a guest post for me, but it was something that kind of clicked with me a little bit. I'm going, hmm, you know what? This happens with a lot of rooms where you have like a very awkwardly placed, um, it's for example, right here, a very awkwardly placed air vent, whether it's AC, whether it's heating, you know, you're going to have those air vents that are going to happen. They're going to either be on the floor or they're going to be up on a wall. So today they're up on a wall for us. So what do we do with this space over here? First of all, this space has one of those wonderful focal walls that I'm such a fan of. Everybody knows what I would say with this. If you have a white vent in the wall, paint that white vent out to the color of the wall. So make this blue if you're going to keep this wall blue. For me, I think what I'd like to do is I want to make this. Uh, I'm going to want, want to make it the same color as all the other walls. So that's what I did here. So we're going to paint this wall out or we're going to paint the vent out. The purpose of that is it's going to blend all together. It's not going to be as noticeable. It'll still be there, but it's not going to be as noticeable. Okay. Now we have a couple of windows. You got a window, two windows over here, a window opposite over here. So you have to be mindful again, if you're going to put a piece of furniture on this wall to give you some disguise of this vent piece over here, it can't be any further out than say maybe a foot or 18 inches, which is about what we have over here on this wall. So you have to keep your measurements in mind when it comes to that. Know what all your dimensions are around the room, especially this dimension here that's going to run into this window. You have more space over here on this side, less space over here on this side. This is the side you got to pay more attention to because that's the side that's going to determine the depth of the furniture that you're going to put on this back wall. All right. So what are we going to do for this back wall? You could put in a cabinet. Maybe the cabinet is going to be in the center over here. Uh, that's not going to really disguise this whole vent situation. So what I came up with for this particular iteration is a floating shelf situation. The floating shelves are not going to come out any further than the depth of this wall over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up just a little bit so that we have maybe it's like that there. So you have a little bit of space underneath some nice floating shelves. I don't know what the purpose of this room is. This could be a living room. This could be another dining room. This could be a den or an office. You know, use your imagination. The point is we're going to cover up that vent with a little bit of decor. You still want to have the ability to have airflow around it. So you don't want to put anything that's going to be super solid in front of it. You don't want to lean up a, a piece of art in front of it, for example. You don't want to put a stack of books in front of it. You want to have the ability for air to move around it. So as you're decorating and merchandising all of these shelves over here, kind of keep that in mind that you want to have some uh, airflow around that vent. But also be able to disguise it a little bit. So you have a vase, you have a, a nice little kind of piece of art here that has a lot of um, negative space in it. Then you have like a decorative plate or a decorative piece of art over here that has a round shape to it, but you can still kind of see that vent behind it. And these pieces are not pushed right up against it. They're sort of in the front of it, allowing the airflow to come through, the heat, the AC, whatever this is going to be that's going to service this room. You want to be able to have that space open a little bit. So that is design dilemma number three. Let's go on to design dilemma number four. Well, this is a good one. What do you do with an awkward niche in a wall? Okay, so niches are some things that are great for displaying some art, displaying some pictures, some paintings, things like that. Um, but sometimes they're just a little bit weird and sometimes they're placed in a very odd room. So this room we're saying is maybe a, a room that is maybe in a hallway or some sort of a pass through room that isn't maybe used for, for seating or something like that, but could be used for other things that you need to kind of keep at hand. So for example, maybe you have a walkway this way and you're walking from one room to a next, and this might be a little sitting room or maybe a reading nook or something like that. And you want to have some some art displayed. So let's do that. I like to put maybe a piece of art in here, have that in there. I like to have a little picture light above that. If you have some electric in there, or if you have the ability to maybe um, have a wireless piece that you could put in there, that might work too. Just to have a little bit of illumination over it so that if you're entertaining, you can have that on and it just becomes a nice little moment as you're walking from room to room. If this is not a final destination room, for example, which is what we're discussing. 
So that would be one idea for this niche here because niches or niches, however you want to pronounce it, are great for having things like artwork and things like that put in them. You might want to build some shelves and put some decor in there and sort of just, you know, build it out so that it is a nice little functional piece where it's not so much a niche anymore, but it's like a built-in shelf in the wall, for example. That way it's, it's sort of flush with the other part of the wall and then you have some depth in the room and you have some ability to put some decor and things like that in there that might be a nice thing to put into this space you might want to make it a functional piece like maybe it is a built-in bar so let's put a built-in bar in here with a couple of open shelves on top and maybe you've built a small little cabinet with a drawer underneath so that you can keep your bar tools and things like that in there and then you have space for wine glasses maybe a nice bucket or some other decor that goes along with a bar themed room, but that's how you might want to take care of a niche in a space. And then this could be turned into, as I said, a pass through where you might want to do another credenza or something over here. If you're going to do something like this, like a built in bar, you might want to have a prep space next to it, like another buffet or a server piece that you can put next to it where you can kind of prepare your drinks and stuff like that. But you have all the storage right there for everything else. So that might be a nice idea for this particular room. <clears throat> The last one I have is number five, which is what to do with a fireplace that's off center. So here we are. Let's look at this room here. This might be a family room. It might be a, um, a den. It might be something, you know, something like that, a living room. You have an entry door here and then right next to it, you have this fireplace and then you have this awkward empty space next to it over here. So what do you do with that? Well, you can put an etogere there. So etrogeres are one of my favorite go-to pieces. I love them. I think they're great because they give you the opportunity to, again, bring in some balance in the room. So you have an etrogere over here, and then you have maybe a piece of art above the fireplace. And that just gives you a nice sort of wall moment. It isn't, um, you know, it's not crowded. Etrogeres are great because, again, you can see through them. You can see the wall. You can see around them. They're open pieces of furniture, which in smaller spaces and more compact spaces is good because you can, you know, um, it, it makes the room feel bigger instead of something that would be a clunky closed up cabinet with solid doors and no space to look around it, no space to see the wall around it. It just feels very imposing. It feels very heavy in the room. So trying to keep the heaviness out of the room, this is what you want to do. And let's go and say maybe we want to put a mirror. Oops, maybe it's not a mirror. Um, but as you can see, as I was saying before, this this is nice because <clears throat> the etagere, just for a quick second here, the etagere, you know, the decor on it could be the height of the door over here. So that's going to give you some nice balance. And then if you want to put a piece of art in between, something that's going to be maybe slightly taller or maybe just as tall as the doorway, just to kind of keep that visual line going across the top here. And it's just going to give you some depth. So what if you wanted to be do something a little bit more extensive? So you're really not happy with the way that this looks. Uh, you're really not happy with having a fireplace that sort of is, is in an awkward space. If you have the money and you have the ability to do it, you might want to redo the whole fireplace itself and bring in a hearth. So you don't want to maybe change the position of where the fireplace is in the room, but you want to build in a kind of a hearth and a facade of the fireplace that goes all the way to the other side of the room so that you have some nice balance that way. So that would be something else that you could do. That way you can have some artwork off to the side, a nice mirror above the fireplace here, and then you have a, a new longer uh, hearth that goes across the bottom of the fireplace to the wall, or you can put some firewood and things like that. That might be something else you want to do. So here is that other solution. So instead of like leaving the fireplace and sort of compensating for that negative space behind or beside the fireplace, you might want to rethink the whole fireplace itself and just put a whole new surround and a whole new facade in. So there you have it. That is five different ways to come up with some design dilemmas. And as I said before, if you liked these kind of videos, Tell me about it in the comments. Tell me if you would have done something different. Tell me if you think that something wouldn't have worked as well. Maybe you're not a fan of round tables, going back to the first idea that we talked about. Maybe you want to bring in a square table or something like that. I'm not a big fan of them because, as you, as I said before in many a different video and blog post, getting around those corners, getting around those edges is a little bit tough to do. But irregardless of that, tell me what you think of this room and tell me what you think of 
uh, the, the solutions I came up with and see if you want to, you know, see a little bit more talk about these kind of dilemmas and I'll do a few more videos for you if you do. So let me know in the comments below, but until next time, I will see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.